Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. You know, I just came off of doing Spotify's top 25 year-end 2021 songs, and I'm ready to dive into Dimash by request. I got a lot of requests to do another Dimash-a-thon, so I'm getting ready to do that now. And I'm not sure when I'm gonna release this stuff, but I have to tell you, these could not be more polar opposites of Spotify's top 25 best songs for 2021, comparing that to Dimash. I mean, this over here couldn't be more shallow and benign and bereft of, I've got to just say talent or musicality or composition or melody, passion, you name it. And we're going to dive into one of the most passionate <laughs> virtuosos that I think is maybe out in the world today. So I just want to dive right in. Uh, we're going to do... Um, uh, adagio. Now, I did a version of Lara Fabian's Adagio, and you can check it out. Uh, Dimash took this on himself, and it is spectacular. I haven't seen all of it. I just kind of spot-checked a few things here, but I want to show you this, man. You won't believe this. Check this out. Here we go. I don't know where to find you. I don't know how to reach you I hear your voice in the way Okay, now I want to point out a couple technical things. I, I should just let this play because it's just so crazy, beautiful, passionate. But there's more coming, so hang in there. I do want to make some technical comments along the way. It's obvious that he warmed his voice up for a higher registration because when he's going, I, I don't know how to love you, right? It sounds really low for him, but I know he can sing a lot lower than that. So his placement is up high. Now, for you guys out there doing my singing chorus and as I cover this with all of my students, uh, that's what we want. We call it little boy voice, especially if we're gonna take it up a lot. So um, he does and he shoots up the octave and boom, he's already heading towards the uh, alto contralto and then on into the coloratura soprano range. So um, let's take it from here. Now, what's also really cool is he's a multi-instrumentalist. So he's playing piano, he's singing that beautifully, that sensitive, um, and he's connecting like one, one instrument. The piano with his voice is just like one thing going on. Just fantastic. The guy is just so gifted, just amazingly gifted. So he's gonna pick off the microphone now and this is what we get next. Check it out. Now, okay, I, I know I wanted to let it play. It's just so emotional, so passionate, so just amazing. Uh, like I said, the complete antithesis of what I just you know put myself through for the you know Spotify's top twenty-five. A few things I want to note. The first thing is, again, I'm going to say this and I'm going to defend this guy. I hear so many people bagging on the fact, oh, he doesn't sing, he tries to sing in English and I can't understand a word he's saying. Shut up. That's what I'm going to say to you guys. Just shut the blank up. The guy is one of the greatest singers that this world has ever seen, maybe ever will see, or <laughs> it's, he's going to be a tough guy to beat, I'll tell you that. But also, I've seen a few aria in my day. I don't speak Italian. I know this is in English. And I'll sit there through an aria, and I, won't, I don't speak Italian. I don't know what these guys are. I know the storyline, so I know when this scene happens or that scene happens. I know what's going on. 
But a lot of people that go to the opera, they go with the intent of kind of already knowing the story. Maybe they're in Italy and they speak Italian, that's great, or they already speak Italian outside of Italy, whatever. Um, but you literally, you literally kind of get what he's saying emotively just by the way he's singing it, whether you understand the lyric or not. That's how good he is, right? Crazy. So. I don't care. I'm just enjoying him for him. He is awesome. And I get kind of the storyline. I'm feeling the passion. It's a, I could tell it's lovers. I could tell he's, you know, he's, he, he's missing somebody. I could tell, you know, they want to get back together again. There's, there's, you know, intrigue. There's, there's, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you just, there's pain, there's suffering. And you hear all that in his voice, just bam. Then he throws down. So I want to show you the transition. I'm going to back it up from the sensitivity to throwing down, you know, the pedal to the metal and hitting the floorboard of uh, just immediate Awesomeness. Here we go. Mixed voice. Now, I want to point something else out that's kind of interesting. I'm going to do six of these, I think, at least, right? And I got a chance to just, like I said, spot check a few of them. He's using a different timbre in his voice. For you Dimash fans out there, he's kind of contemporizing the sound a little bit and he's not throwing the sound so far back in his throat. He's employing a little mask and he's bringing it into the front. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So far, you know, he's he's not gonna cover the sound. Watch this. Ray, he's bringing it in the face, he's contemporizing the sound. Instead of, oh, right, he's, ha, he's bringing a lot into the face and he's bringing the front. Now, something else, his voice timbre changes a lot and I can't quite figure out, because he uses the same microphone a lot, sometimes, and we're gonna get into this, so if you guys are Dimash fans and you wanna go the distance with me, and I'm gonna make some comments and some other stuff, some of this stuff sounds kind of heavily processed. I don't mean auto-tuned processed, I don't mean affected, like a lot of effects per se, though they, he does use a, a, you know, a fair amount of reverb and, um, and delay, uh, but there is um, some different, maybe tube processing for the preamps and stuff because his voice sounds a little thinner here than on some of his other recordings. So who knows like when you're walking into a situation what you're getting. That doesn't mean he's not singing awesome, doesn't mean it doesn't sound great. I'm just saying it's a thinner sound than what he's used to from some of his other recordings that I've heard, okay? Not a bad thing, just happens to be the case in this song. Here we go. <laughs> Very dry. So he's using a very so brave, very light, agile, uh, young kind of sound from you know what I mean? You go, hey! and he'd use that timbre. Here he's going, hey! 
and he's got a really bright tone on the sound, which is not like him for a song like this. He does it sometimes, but not, so he's toggling back and forth between a lot of his operatic um, you know, roots and, and that bag of tricks, and then he's contemporizing the sound a lot. Now I noticed too, he's pacing himself a lot in the lower registration, and I wanna shut up right now because I wanna let some of this play out instead of kind of destroying the momentum and, and the, uh, the con uh, contiguous uh, energy of it. But So let me back this up a little bit more, and let's play this again. Here we go. Hey. He's really dark on the sound, and then. Good stuff. Wow. Absolutely crushed it. Lara Fabian's probably going, <laughs> you're like, ah, oh, yikes. You know, right? She probably wants to do another version by now. Um, that's probably the best version of Adagio I've ever heard. Lara's is great. She does a killer job, but he just was leaving it all in the field, man. He just threw down really hard. But he went, ah! you know, he has all that really heavy mask that he doesn't normally use. His, and he usually covers the sound a lot more, kind of like a coloratura soprano, but he doesn't do that here. So, and I've noticed that he's been taking some chances, you know, kind of stepping into different uh, tonalities, probably looking to contemporize the sound, depending on the song and so forth, but just an absolutely stellar job. Dimash, you are the man, dude. You, you just crush it. You, you're just paving the way to greatness. Like I said, I just came off of a really disappointing uh, 2021 Spotify going through the top. So if you go to Spotify and you look at Spotify years end, years end 2021, and you see the listen to the songs listed, and then you do the rock thing. I listen to the top 50 rock songs, stayed up all night listening to stuff. And then you turn around and listen to this. He's like, he, there's no possible way to compare any of it. And it, it doesn't even matter if you like his music or not. I'm just talking about greatness versus not greatness. So anyway, thank you, Dimash, uh, for uh, holding the torch for us. And uh, I got a lot more Dimash coming your way. So stick around for my next video.